recording of part two. So welcome to Bunny's Designs. Uh, this is part two of a live stream um, also for YouTube and uh, I'm using I'm I'm colouring my first page my first page in Anamorphia and I wanted to choose a page that was fairly easy so they're all natural things they're flowers leaves animals uh, and that that makes it a little bit easier and what I've done is I've picked out all the toadstools first and coloured those in on both pages uh, I've coloured the red roses and then I started on the leaves and the first tree that I did I started dark and this way of watercolouring is you get lighter and lighter and actually what that's done is make, given me the base of their actual stags so they can be that colour and that's going to be a natural progression out of their morphing um, trees. So I've done the olive green, I've been playing about with the colours. I've mixed a green, one blob of very bright green with two blobs of uh, bright orange and I came up with a bit of an olive colour. I watered it down, played about with the colour a little bit and, and put a drop of red into it to kind of tone it down a bit so it isn't a bright olive which we had it's now a dull olive um, but that's going to be quite a nice shade and it's dried on here so I'm just going to reconstitute it back into watercolour and the other way of doing that is I have a pipette and I bought these what did I, do that for? I bought them for the inks, the printer inks that I've been playing about with. So if I just put a blob on there, that'll be enough to just get it going. Um, so I need the green there so we can see what I'm doing. Uh, I'll zoom in. I seem to be at a, a, quite a strange angle, but. the that's quite a nice natural angle for my elbow so I've got to think about that so I'm going to zoom in I think that's probably about right and I want to be, to be a bit careful I'm going to do this one first if I try and get this magic new camera to f to kind of uh, hopefully when I do that so I've got some of the brown uh, that we used and I can't think what I did with it. I'm pretty sure I used it from here. So I shall reconstitute this and put it next to that one and it's very similar. It doesn't matter if it's completely out as long as it'll be the same shade and tone because obviously it's not far away from its original. Um, so I'll take my, my glasses off and um, I'll just see if that's working. I'm going to do that one uh, just a bit of a test first so we start at the bottom and then what I was doing was working up and what that was doing it was making this color paler and paler as it goes up the tree now that is 
probably not as varied as this one and I think that one's a little bit nuttier but it's still quite nice and then that's brought that into the deep I'm going to put maybe a little bit deeper at the bottom I would have liked that a little bit dark but I could play with that later and then probably have a lovely deep chestnut colour for the stag um, but I'm quite pleased with that I like that one better but I can't have everything can we so now I shall go around all these leaves carefully bringing this with me so let me pop my glasses on um, uh, and just bear with me two seconds because what we're going to have to do is just take this off Oh, that's good. Right. That's better. So let's go back to there. So this is part two. Sorry about that. Welcome to part two of uh, Bunny's Designs. And I thought I'd show from start to finish a whole page in... Um, not a complicated um, design, but quite quite um, an intricate, shall we say. So, you know, you have to concentrate a little bit with this. It's not, it's not do in front of the television, really. Um, so, again, this tree comes from here. But what I thought is if we got all the the tree greenery out of the way then you have some kind of order then because things kind of it's a bit all morphing into itself things start to become their own their own stance and their own color so for instance up here there's some leaves but there's also two sandbags hanging out of the balloon so again now i've done that that kind of sits out now so we can tell what's what and that's basically what you have to do with this this type of uh, fascinating drawings is to kind of pick out a certain thing oh this is how i do it anyway i find it easy because you first look at it and you think my goodness where do i start so what i do is i've 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 done the mushrooms first and I've done all the mushrooms across the two pages then I did the red roses that I could find and then I did the green leaves on this page and I'm going back colouring in the tree uh, the tree colour now the bark in a soft brown so that lends itself to the soft brown of the um, excuse my stomach, um, the soft browns of um, I just almost made a mistake. Then I've got to be really, really just concentrate a little bit too. It definitely isn't if you want this to be nice. And I did photocopy one of the pages, but most of them I'm not photocopying them. I'm actually colouring them in, which is something I don't normally do. But this particular set lends itself to that. Probably wanted that a little bit darker anyway. So by going over it twice. 
and we do want a little bit of variation and there is a pair of bunny's ears there as well they obviously don't want coiling in you'll have to forgive scratching around and noise I've got three puppies, a parrot and two bunnies in this room uh, but I'm not very well today so I'm on the sofa so it's a bit of a madhouse uh, and one's got a bad cold, he went to the vets last night he's very old, he's Dexter, we don't know actually how old he is So that's again that's given that some some a semblance of order behind there. We now can pick out the dinosaur. The mushrooms are standing out, the trees standing out. And then just above there we have some roses and some more greenery. So it's starting to kind of create into now I could have probably done them a slightly different colour because the horns are not going to be as brown as so that's this is morphed from here really but never mind I can turn it back when I get to the horns of these fantastic stacks I don't know what they call them I've forgotten what they call them as a name so this is a live stream oh dear I do apologize He's, he sounds really terrible, but he's very old, bless him. Uh, so, welcome to Bunny's Designs. Um, as I say, this is a live stream, hopefully with live, live people, but at the minute, um, I'm hoping that uh, we will be... Uh, oops. The problem I have is I can't see. I can't see chat from where I am. So forgive me if I miss anybody. Um, I don't know why I can't see chat on here. I'm in the other side of the room uh, because I'm not very well. I've done to it. Is that Artsy Girl? But I think that's his four. I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong place. So do forgive me if uh, I don't know quite what I've done. I thought I sorted all this out, but so welcome to Bunny's Designs. As I say, this is part two of my Imagimorphia, sorry, it's my Animorphia and I'm doing the, the stags and I want to do it from start to finish and I'm using my little palette, I am quite well zoomed in so that everybody can see what I'm doing so I thought I'd do them from start to finish so that um, you can see that they, they're quite daunting when you first look at these but the, the trick is to pick off certain things and do all of those. So I started with all the, I started with all the mushrooms, the toadstools, and then I went to the. Um, bear with me, because I've changed the brown now. Uh, and then I went to all the. Uh, oops, the puppy's come back for a sleep. Bless him. Um, so. I'm trying to keep him frame. So my idea was to pick out 
the to first of all pick out all the bark kind of twiggy things um, that are coming out of the heads their four heads and there um, and I quite like this this particular brown so that's going to lend itself to the color of the actual form so I'm trying to go around and keep everything in frame um, and still see me pick out playing with this rather dirty muddy colour but when you watered it down it gives quite a nice so I've actually got two puddles now I've got the puddle with the brown and I've got the puddle for the leaf and that'll be enough for the next page because I'm working very very dry well and I say dry it's watercolour but I'm working this is how dry I work when I do the watercolours on a napkin. So if you haven't seen anybody work this dry before, the video that uh, Bunny's Designs on YouTube has a section of colour watercolouring a napkin. And that kind of lends itself to this nice way of dry working. So I'm on my knee at the moment on the sofa in a cushion thing. And the only thing I'm going to spill is my little water pot, which has got probably a tablespoon of water in it, maybe a teaspoon. And that allows you to work quite dry. Um, so I think I've finished on that page. Just found a little spot on that side. Uh, there may be strange noises. We have a parrot who has been very quiet today. Charlie the parrot. Uh, we lost Thumper a couple of months ago, a month ago, or so ago. Uh, so we had Thumper, uh, the disabled dwarf rabbit. I'm trying to get up here because I've missed a tree. We have Snowball, who is a giant white rabbit a giant white and we have George oh sorry she started to dig for England we have George who's a dwarf who was acquired and rescued because we wanted a friend for Thumper and Snowball grew too quick so Snowball was very tiny to begin with and they said she was the runt of the lit and she wouldn't grow very much well, she's the size of a dinner plate now. And she was the size of a small hamster. <laughs> so she's grown rather a lot. So I filled that one in quite nicely. And it goes up there a little bit more. So the beauty of doing this is you're picking things off and trying to, to other things kind of become more clearer. So here, this little section was quite monotonous. But now we've got toadstools we've got a dinosaur we have a tree behind and then we have a kind of a bunny there's a bunny in a balloon and by picking things off that are easy to do you've got your color here ready um, so i am now going to turn this upside down and work on the the leaves so i have a section here I can just get this to go. I have a section here. So I'm going to colour that in next. And um, so, welcome to Bunny's Designs. Unfortunately, I can't see chat at the moment. I've done something to it yet again. So welcome to Billy Designs. I'm working through a complete page of um, the, um, the Animorphia and it's the stag's head because they do look quite daunting. I don't know why I can't see that again. How strange. For some reason, I do something wrong. So if I just... put that on there maybe that might that 
might do it. So welcome to Bunny's Designs. I'm, as I say, I'm really I can't seem to see any chat at all. So I've kind of messed that one up. Let me see if that does it. No. I'm really sorry. I cannot seem to. I don't know why it does this. It's the strangest thing there is. Oh, hi everybody. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Sorry about that. My, uh, it, it's not showing up on my, my Kobo, so I do apologise. So we have Carol, Vicky, uh, Little P, um, Hi Inky Well. I'm really sorry. I've done because I'm not very well. I'm, I'm on the wrong side of the the lounge, <laughs> so I've zoomed into this um, uh, into this Animorphia book, and my idea was to go through it because sometimes they look quite daunting because there's so much detail on them. So I have a little way, a cheat's way of doing it is I pick things off and do them in, on the whole page and then other things kind of become a bit more clearer so welcome to the second part of this uh, this stream uh, it may be cut off short because the my mum in law is 92 she's um they took them to the sea to the coast and she's ill so unfortunately they will be arriving uh, in a short time but I just thought I'd carry on with this. So I'm still using my little messy palette, but there's tons of colour on there. Uh, and as a tight Yorkshire girl, I really want to get my money's worth. So I'm trying to now go through the leaves. So I'm using a tiny bit of this, this green colour, which, uh, and uh, excuse the noises, but that's from the little man, not a million miles away was on my toes <laughs> fast asleep well we hope so because he has a nasty tendency to bark at the com the incomplete um, at the wrong moment so um, so that's what I was trying to do still with the watercolors um, and I'm actually using the bit of photocopy paper as a palette just to make sure I'm not going to do something drastic because I normally photograph things but this particular book I thought I could keep for kind of best am I in frame let me just check that in frame I can just see that from the other side so welcome everybody sorry if I've missed anybody off hope everybody's in, having a a good day. So I think I've sorted chat for that, but I can't see that on my little Kobo where I was hoping to read chat. So, um, but thanks for joining me. Uh, and uh, three dogs, a parrot, and two two bunnies. <laughs> it's a bit of a madhouse round here. Um, I just cannot, unfortunately, find chat at all. And I'm not sure why. I keep trying to try it on there, but 
it's not playing ball it doesn't want to play so I just have to uh, carry on regardless I hope that's okay with everybody we have some um, quite bad storms coming I think in England we had a heat wave for two days and now we've got the winds that are uh, upsetting the dogs so I um, I've figured out a way of uh, giving a government warning of shouting dog if I think they're going to bark because it can be quite frightening and quite deafening if Alfie who is right next to me decides that he's uh, not happy so I hope I'm in frame We just the problem is I can see some I can see some people from chat but I can't see if I'm in frame I'm just in frame there because my little Kobo has gone off now delightful of it so I hope you're all having a pleasant time whatever day time of day it is in your neck of the woods um, I think it's about two o'clock here. As I say, unfortunately, I'd expected them to be back about four, so I thought we'd have a couple of hours, but um, Grandma's uh, ill, so they're bringing her home. And she's 92, so she's kind of... Uh, oops, I've got to kind of treat her with the uh, kid gloves, really. She hasn't been to my house for a long time. But the dogs have been very good, so that's good. <laughs> yes, that's uh, the little monster who's got his head under the under the, the cushion on my knee. So he kind of uh, wanders around a bit. So I'm trying to go around all the trees because I think if you pick off little things, I mean everybody's got their own way of working. But I find the other thing is I've made this colour. And I there's probably half left. So that's just about enough to do the other page. So if I did something else and finished a page off, and then tomorrow I come back to this, I probably forget what I was doing. And I probably lose that that quite nice green because it does look wishy washy. But when you see it on the page, it's just a pleasant pale green so I'm looking about for others there's another one there but I do have to be careful that I don't knock this off so there's one here now I've zoomed in I hope I've managed to sort the focus out because um, I have a photograph of a, a, a card of a cat that kind of work quite well. Um, and so that was quite nice, but the camera seemed to like that. But uh, at the moment there is a little puppy just about 18 inches away from the camera. So all should be quite peaceful, hopefully. He's just been into the kitchen where my daughter was doing some painting. Some painting the kitchen cabinets. Because I, I did half the kitchen last year and I, I was, I've been ill ever since. And she was desperate to get it finished. And then, of course, what did the King Charles do? He went in there and puddled through it and paddled it all through the new floor. So he's in the doghouse again. And the lurchers in her dog bed, doggy dreaming. So 
I'm trying to find some more on the top here, less some here. So what I'm trying to do is to keep the colour in so you can see exactly how how dry I work. So just bear with me two seconds. I just have to move a cushion. So the little terror of Lessing is fast asleep. He is fast asleep, bless his little socks. But uh, you don't know what he's doing, what he's dreaming about. Do you? So I keep kind of keeping this quite... That isn't like single cream anymore now. Um, it's quite dry. And I've been using a palette on the uh, photo paper. As a paper palette, if it gets too, if it gets too much, that's quite nice again. Um, you need some colour in there, really. So there's one or two dogs snoring a little out of the way. As Terry Scott used to say, sing on that um, My Brother, I think it was the 70s or the 80s, and he brought out a record, a comedy record, which isn't what he's dreaming about when they're asleep because they're so naughty. And I have a bumblebee in here as well, uh, not a bumblebee, a blue bottle that my daughter's going to sort out later, I think. So I'm in the pet's room, so it's very quiet at the moment, but things could change. So welcome everybody, and thanks for watching, thanks for joining me. Um, you are watching Paint Dry, sorry. <laughs> it's as boring as Paint Dry, but... Uh, it's just for anybody that wanted to see how dry you have to be. This is about, as I say, the dryness. You do about four or five leaves before you need a drop more. But that will allow you to draw on a napkin your own designs. And it will allow you to um, it allows you to draw on them and it will allow you to colour in watercolour. I don't think you do markers because I think, well once it touches it just bleeds. Um, I found um, a pen. Which one is it? There's a, I, I'm not in my studio, so I can't find things. There's a pen that I used on the watercolouring uh, video on YouTube. On watercolouring a napkin. Um, there's a pen that I found which is a permanent pen. Uh, but my pens I use for, um, for graphic design the isographs that it's basically a tube with a net with a piece of wire and the ink drips down the wire and that's basically what you draw with so of course that catches instantly on the napkin and you can't draw with it um, but I found a pen that has like a ballpoint end it's quite fine so you can do some nice line drawings on it so then you can do your own drawings on a napkin and then color them in very dry like this I'm still in frame. So there seems to be some more leaves there. Now this is getting quite pale now, so I'll just just see if I can just keep some colour in it. Um, I made it by the the pea green, the very vivid green. Uh, one dollop of that, and a couple of dollops of the of the orange, and that made an olive green. And then I put a touch of red in it to darken it down, because being a complementary colour to green, the red will darken it instantly. So that gave me a deep colour. And then, of course, using it very wet, 
has made it paler, if that makes sense. So I want to do that one next. So I've sorted out the bark, which, which becomes the stag's... Um, I've forgotten the word now. I think it's my fibromyalgia that I think I'm talking sense and I think I'm just talking <laughs> I think I'm talking a lot of rubbish I do think I forget to finish my sentences off which is a trait of that illness I think um, so I still got a fair bit of this very pale green it's a pale olive but you kind of find lots of greens. When I was messing about for quite a while, that was the pea green, which was there, and then I put some red into it, which turned it down, and then I just played with the water until I got this wishy-washy green. But I think when all the other things are in there, it's going to look quite nice. It'll draw the finished image together by all the leaves being the same. So it's such a busy, busy um, page. I think they're all busy pages, what I would call busy pages. So if you did everything in really vivid colours, I think, I think it might... Oh, I can see when you put it in caps, thanks, that, that makes a bit of a difference. So if you want to speak to me, yeah, pop it in caps. I can't quite make out your names, Bessie, but sorry, but hi to everybody. Um, you like the different shades of green well I'm amazed at how many you can make uh, just with that's what it came out of that pea green I put some here and I put a touch of the red into it and then because I work quite loose that was just one dollop so I kind of think it does that but you probably I wouldn't have picked this out to do this if I was flicking in my little book, um, I would have picked the olive that's already been made. But you wouldn't say that that's an olive, really. It's a tone of an olive. A tint of an olive. Sorry, my little puppy's just moved. There's always lots of uh, snoring going on in this, in this room. Um, but, oh, you see, I've missed a rose. Is that, that's the other thing you can do. I tried to pick out all the red roses and I've missed one right there. Um, but nevertheless, if I carry on with this green, because I don't think I can make it again. I can make it similar, but it's always really difficult to make the same, exact same colour. Unless you do it by measurement. You know, if you were making a, a mug full, you could do it with um, a syringe then you would be able to get it very near. But I would think just using a paintbrush and dabbing it in and out, I wouldn't have thought you'd get it exact. But there again, I don't think that would matter too much with, with colouring in because you know something at one side of the page is going to look completely different. And there's so much going on anyway that if you did make a slight error, I'm sure it wouldn't show up because these are so busy, these pages. Whoops! I just spilt my. Sorry, little pea, darling. What did you say? How much water to put in? Um, a few spoonfuls. I've just spilt my water, but there was only about a teaspoon, so. Not much damage there. Um, I'm not sure what I, if I do it with a different colour. Um, the yellow's kind of there, so I've got kind of small brush. And if I reconstitute that, I should get an orange. So that's that's like do single cream. That that's like double cream, because I put a, a drop of water in each one. Um, this is like single cream, I would say, and then 
if I just pop that back in the middle and I have a little pipette to put some water in. So I've only spilt about a teaspoon. My puppy's been so funny. Um, so that gave me the first green, which was that. So that's quite quite creamy. That's probably a normal watercolour consistency. Um, and then we've got that's another spoon of water, another paintbrush of water and that's another one probably that but then what I do is I kind of take it off the brush a little bit because if I just went in with that that would be too wet if I just do that on there if you can see that's too wet that's left a puddle but if you keep taking it off until there's hardly anything on there that's why I keep dropping. I've used this now as a palette. And then keep taking that off until there's hardly any on there. And then you get about four leaves. And one, two. Well, it's a bit. You probably. Get, I normally. Oh, that's. I see, I've just made a mistake. I've used the yellow that I've just made, but never mind. This is getting really, really watered down now, so I won't have as many. I'll just go over that to darken it a little bit. Um, so you get about four leaves. Keep going in that one now because I've made it. But when it's so dry, you can do about four leaves. It's trial and error, but because I've been practicing on those napkins, that's really given me, um, and your pages is flat, it's not wet, it doesn't crinkle. Oh, sorry, so you've just had a, an advert, have you? Yeah, they do. If I watch on my Kobo, they don't do that. Excuse me, I'm having a quick, quick slip. If I watch, if I... If I do them, um, if I watch them on my Kobo, I haven't had any adverts at all. How strange is that? Oh, hi, Vicky S. Yes, I can see in caps. <laughs> I've got my glasses on, but I had to keep taking the glasses off because I can't see the fine work because I've zoomed in quite a lot. So if I zoom out a smidgen, is that zoomed in too much? I say I keep trying to play with this, this camera because. It was impossible trying to. So if I come out a little bit and turn that the right way without making anybody dizzy. So just at a funny angle because I, let me say I'm on the sofa. I keep having to put that somewhere. Try not to spill it. I use the photocopy. I love photocopy paper. I use it for everything. But I decided not to photocopy this particular book. Um, but I've picked out now quite a few greens. So it doesn't look quite as daunting on that side now. I did the little mushrooms first because I had that red um, and then you don't make a mistake and colour something indifferently because I do want to be quite careful with this um, and it's as flat as anything this is the technique I use for water colouring on a napkin so it's as dry as dry you could be but you're colouring with watercolour <laughs> so it's a bit of a contradiction in turn but I'm sure if you can play about just get a plain napkin, draw on it, and then try to colour in. And with, with watercolours, or water-based colours. Um, did I say, did, have we still got Dee Dee with us? Because this is my little book. And I have the pencils, the ink tents. 
um, and because the, somebody got me the tin, they're all, they're all in order. And mine are little squares, so I've got the, paint, the pencil and scratched one way, scratched another way. And I think it's about four times before you can't really get any more colour on there. This one's an original, so it's in with sellotape. Uh, so there's every colour and they're all labelled with the number. So if I use too much, we see I like the Lagoon, which I think is the one that Dee Dee used when she did the back of the rabbit, the, the background of the rabbit. It's a gorgeous deep purple, but I have, I don't know if you can see there, about 10 shades. Um, and that's what you get from this. This is a little brush, but I just kind of wet it and then colour in. And they are, because they're ink tense, they do work well, but you give that, uh, that little bit more control because I can't kind of scratch, I can't scratch with a pencil anymore. So when I had to revamp these, I did it, but when I do the other ones, my daughters will have to do the Caran d'Ache Neo Colour 2s. Um, I haven't labelled these, but I wanted the full range because I would have a hundred, another hundred colours in here. Um, and then when, when one, see some of one or more, that's the, the pinky one that you use for skin colours, skin tones. Um, but the red, I haven't used that one. So when, I, when that one wears out, you just re-scribble over the top. But that means that all your Caran d'Ache would be in about a millimetre. A millimetre little book. But you've got your hundred Caran d'Ache near colour twos in there. Take them out. And especially in hot weather, near colour twos melt. So they're not really that good to take out. Did that make sense? I keep waffling about my little book. Just bear with me two seconds, I've lost chat now. You, yes, I love my, <laughs> my little book. It's fab. I would think it's about a suitcase. If I have, um, I think 500 and some now. Um, colours in it but of course because these are actually professional watercolours uh, the bottom ones are the top ones are Winsor & Newton they're from a little set a, a travel set that I can't open with my fingers I cut about a millimetre two millimetres off the bottom so the pans look identical the pans look perfectly all right but I now have the two yellows the two reds and the two blues together with yellow ochre uh, and if I'm particularly lazy, there's the sap green and a uh, Virinian green. There's a white there, which I would probably never use. A cad red pale and cad red. So because I've put this little plastic thing on this side, I can make every colour I want, as long as I remember to cover that up. Oh, you've made a book yourself. Brilliant. How many colours have you got in it? I reckon that I've got 520 now. All the, all the peerless are in there. The full set of Derwent pencils. And they are beautiful. When you Beautiful colours. They're, they're not as vibrant. They're vibrant, but they're not, of course, intense as the ink tens are. Um, the reds and the ink tens are fab. But when, I, when I'm poorly, I just pick a colour. And then I flick to another colour. So I can have a peerless purple right next to an ink tense red. And then I would get a Caran d'Ache near colour 2 green. Well, if you'd had those colours, you'd have to get three sets of everything out and have them all over your desk. Um, and the Ganzai Tambi watercolours as well. They are gorgeous. Uh, and you can see I use the green with my little... and. That's all it is. It's a piece of my in frame. Photocopy paper. Again, cheap photocopy paper. Fold it in half. Cut the long side. Then cut them in half. And then make your paper palettes with sketchbook paper. Not watercolour paper. Because everything 
everything, uh, watercolour paper absorbs colour. You want it to sit on top. And then I just wet the pans of colour, daub them on top and left them overnight to dry. So I've got 36. They are fab. And then you just slide them into a photo book. A, a photograph, a thin photograph book. You just slot that into there and then that plastic protects that one. And the next page, oh, I put that in the wrong one, probably. And the next page protects the next one. As long as you've got plastic between. Sorry, dog alert, there might be a bark in a moment. Little man's just woken up. Sit down. Little man's just woken up. <laughs> Whoops. So there could be a dog alert, could be a bark. So you've got lots of colours. Well, I worked out, again, it's a suitcase. So w would you get your, uh, your um, Ink Tense pencils out? You send you two box and then get your hundred box of near colour twos out and fish out for three different colours. Whereas I've got every single one. And the I did it because I've got arthritis and I can't get tops off, I can't get tins open. Uh, and these are the graphite tint. These are beautiful as well, there's 24 of those. Um, so there's quite a few in here. But if you think that there are shades 10 shades of every colour. If I can squidge up. You see there are 10 shades of every colour. So then you can times it by uh, 10. So I have 5,000 colours. Which is a bit mind-blowing. The dog's name is Alfie who's the Cavalier King Charles. Um, there's a lurcher called, called Gigi, but she got Gigi, Piggle Pants and Gigi, so now we call her Pigs. And then there's little Dexter who's um, Heinz 57. And he's, um, he's called Dexter. And this book was £1.50 from paper chase I don't think that comes up and it holds 24 photographs uh, but I broke the spine I couldn't do it now but I did it a couple of, uh, about a year ago I broke the spine so it would be fatter and squished in extra pages but um, together with the little <laughs> yes, we sing that when he's been naughty. I took that on the train um, a couple of days ago and I have a mixture of um, Derwent Water Pencils and Caran Dash near Colour 2's there. And that's the ink tense colour that Dee Dee used. The, the Lagoon one, the really dark purple. But because I work quite pale they're ink tents so you can get some fab colors from ink tents you don't have to do them as deep dark did that make sense and i colored this i started this i think didn't i i did that yesterday as well but i used the colors from my palette so they are different these are from the palette that i was using this today um, from those three colours. So you can get different things. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh, you've got some more ads. Um, but it does lend itself. Um, and because now I've put these colours in there, um, and I, th I think I did it on a, on, a, on a stream last week, I cut the bottom... You have to cut them out of the little pans and then cut a couple of millimetres very carefully with a scalpel. Oh, 
thanks Dee Dee, thanks ever so much. I wish I knew all your names, I only know Dee Dee. I'm terrible with names. This is always an ad at the wrong moment, but because I've now got this in here, I've got, I can get these vibrant colours. So I was quite pleased with that. The only thing is, if you do this, always remember that your palette that you use, you have to wipe it with a baby wipe and then wipe it with a, a kitchen towel to make sure that it's always dry when you shut it onto your colours. All the other ones, it doesn't matter. It's just that one it does because you'll contaminate them and then you ruin them. Well, they're not ruined. You could wipe them with a baby wipe. I'm sure we've all had. This is quite a nice set. These are sketching washes from Derwent. So I can do some pencil washes. Some, and that's quite nice. They're in there as well. Um, I've lost count of what the... And these are uh, um, Faber-Castell. I've got a little box with about six in. Yeah, I'm going to Derwent, um, the pencil factory, in October. We do a model show up there. Um, and again, I can take this. I used to take a suitcase full of things. Now I just take this. And I can colour my own work. I can colour a book. Or I can colour a napkin. All out of this. Because you work very dry. And the worst thing I spill is a tablespoon of water. And again, that's brilliant. Because if you're on an aeroplane you can use the top of your bottle of water that you buy on the plane and you can, I use the top, that's what I normally use um, a little top and there's about a tablespoon in there so that's all you spill, so when I'm in the car and I spill a tablespoon of water hubby can't shout at me I always waffle about my little books <laughs> I'm just obsessed by my little book. So when I go to Derwent, I'm going to give them this idea and see if that they can produce this kind of um, these kind of things, read all printed out with with so you can put um, your colours. You you can buy this to print out or buy it, and you can fill it out with your own colours, all neat squares. They're really thickly for the, um, there is a, a, a YouTube video I made when I did these um, Ganzai Tanvi watercolours because they are gorgeous but they're in a big box and every time I pick that box up I drop them and the pans are gorgeous but they spill out and it's about an A5 size, it's about 8.5 by 11 it's a, it's a beautiful box but it's a bit awkward so I've put them in here and I mean, you can't do a big watercolour, you couldn't do a, a fab wet, wet watercolour with them. But you can certainly watercolour in your books. Um, and you could certainly do a watercolour sketch with them. Uh, you just couldn't do a, a rather large watercolour. So they're daubed on. Um, I, I haven't got a large paintbrush with me, but basically what I did, I wet the pan of colour like these. So I wet the pan and I scooped out as much paint as I could and I twisted the paintbrush to make a big fat, if you can see some light, you'll see, I think it's the greens that are better, um, or is it that colour that's better? You see there that there's a big fat puddle of colour and it was daubed on and left. I kept daubing it on and getting more daub, and the pen, the pans look perfect, and then left to dry, and then you label them. So I know now if that's going a bit, they did crack a little bit, um, but I've used them and used them, and the beautiful colours. These, these are, again, these are a bit like ink tens. These are just absolutely fab colours, uh, and if you wet them a lot you can get a more vibrant pink so that was so the pans um, I'm really sorry I can't oh is it mad rat lady sorry darling I can just 
the television is on the far side of the room and I've plugged the laptop in it because for my mum-in-law I was trying to get her to watch the safari animals um, because she's nearly nearly blind now, bless her. So I put I put the laptop onto the television as a big screen. So that's what what's on your wish list? Which which things did you want? Because the reason I designed this little book is that I didn't want everybody to go out and buy hundreds of everything. Um, whatever you've got, you can put in this book. Um, I. The reason I took a long time, that took about half an hour to cut and they're just stuck in with um, PVA glue on a piece of sketchy paper. I actually think that one isn't, I think that one is, you can buy postcards which are watercolour. I think that's what that is and I'd used it as a palette because you can use all these as a palette, a water palette. It's just quite good sketchbook paper. Oh, the, yes, the Kurataki uh, Ganzai. Um, I think they were about £14, but then I think you've got like £14 um, for the um, postage. So sometimes that can kind of be a bit upsetting. Yeah, they are They are gorgeous to work with. have to say I love them, but I don't ever use them in the pan. I've only ever used them out of here. And I will put that blue... And then I will use a Karen Dashnia colour too, or I'll use a Peerless. Um, the only colours I don't mix, um, and I'm going to make another book, and I'm going to put all the colours together. So I'll have the reds from the near colour twos next to the reds of the Peerless, next to the reds of the Derwent watercolours, uh, next to the Ink Tens. So all the reds are going to be together, all the greens are going to be together, and all the blues. And the only way you know what you're using is because of this name. Um, the pencils you scribble. You scribble the pencils. So as I say, I started with number 62, at uh, number 1. Um, the ink tents, that's number one, which is white, which you can't see. That's number two. I tell a lie. They've got funny numbers on them. I do tell a lie. It's the uh, the Derwent watercolour pencils. But, I mean, they're beautiful colours. Um, I start with number one, two, three, four. And I scribbled, the, I put them on two pieces of sketchbook because I expected these, I've had them four years, to just rot away with water but I think it's because I, I, I use them all all the time all separately not one particular one apart from that one <laughs> actually wears away but I made them on two so I could pull that off and I'm just replacing a small one but actually all you do is scribble over the top because this sketchbook paper is quite good quality but it lasts it's the sea life one but it, it, it lasts perfectly well. These get really wet and they just dry out. It's very strange because I did expect them to rot um, and they haven't. Even with a, even when I want it quite, um, quite vivid, I'll wet the square. Oh, hi, Emma. I'll remember that. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Yes, I'll remember that, darling. So, um, yes, I used to visit Oxford quite quite a long time ago. Uh, I live in uh, New York, just south of York. Um, so, we... Um, so, yeah, but you, the other thing is, when you do the uh, paints especially if you're using a large paintbrush, what I found was I couldn't throw away the paintbrush with all the green on because I squadged out as much as I could but I still had a paintbrush full. So I decided, uh, and it did take me all day, but I'd, I used a colour page, a colour book that I didn't like very much and out of each paintbrush of colour that I did the 36, I got 20 full pages of colours of um, there's mandalas and different 
images on a page and there were 20 pages so when you do something like this and you wash the colour away you're washing an awful lot of colour away so as a tight Yorkshire lass now I kind of really want to get my money's worth um, in the back I have I think they're um, Windsor & Newton gouache and I put them on a piece of the paper and they've cracked but they are still there they still reconstitute to lovely colours so uh, my best advice is try what you've got these are professional pastels it, the beautiful pastels that people do those amazing I've had them for years I couldn't use them so I kind of I wet a square of colour and then I got the, the, the pastel and I just small circles and I could see the colour absorbing into the water and I just moved it every time I couldn't get any more colour in so now I have lots of my uh, colours I didn't write down what they were I wrote the names down but I didn't I kind of wrote down what they were um, and the hydrus there's only one drop of the hydrus on here I don't know where they are now. I don't know if I've done this. They're here. You want one drop of each colour, and that's what I did the tigers with and the rabbits. Um, and that's a bit messy, but I can't wipe that away because there's tons of tons of colour. Again, um, just this is a zero ten or a ten zero. It's a very fine brush. But if I just do that, and I do that, there's just literally tons of colour. That's now all constituted back to a very vivid purple. So you can do it with anything you anything you want really. If it's a if it's a drop, if it's a liquid form, put it on plastic. Um, if it's a water based I would put it on the sketch paper and then attach it to cheap watercolor uh, to cheap photocopy paper oh thank you very much Emma thank you for joining me uh, I hope it wasn't too boring uh, normally watching somebody cooling it's I find it's like watching paint but I love doing it but I'm always conscious that I have the most boring droney voice on the planet um, but my little book sits quite nicely with um, the sketchy stories so I can take that on a train uh, and colour in and when everybody goes shopping or leaves me in the car uh, and when I went to hospital um, that's what I did this one with I sat at the hospital and I coloured this one in just by using this, uh, it is a travel pack, it's got the two yellows, um, I use uh, cadmium yellow, the warm, um, lemon yellow which is the cold, which kind of went to mush but it's in there, uh, Elysian crimson and cadmium red and ultramarine blue and, and cerulean blue and from those three, those six colours that's all you need played about on here and then I sat at the hospital for three hours waiting for hubby and I watercolored and I got all those tones all those colors all those greens by just messing about on a little paper palette and um, the only reason that this is flat dry on this side the only reason that's crinkly is um, somebody pulled out my husband and I eat braked and I spilt the little pat, the little tablespoon of water and because it was on a slant it kind of went down the back of me but that's only crinkled because of that but this side isn't crinkled at all so thanks for stopping by I hope uh, as I say I like to inspire people to use what they've got um, because things get a bit pricey but if you've got six of everything um, then you could you could make quite a lot of colors and that's what I thought about I might do in one of my color color series is take the ink tents and mix them together as a dry form so if you took um, 
the only one that I know definitely works is, and they do have it, I think. I think they have ultramarine blue. Or maybe perhaps they don't. Um, but this is the peacock blue and the lagoon is very much a purpley blue. So if you could get the purpley blue with a very dark Van Dyke brown, probably violet, if you mix those together on a, on a piece of sketchy paper and then when you constitute them together as water to make a colour, you would get Payne's Grey. So there's probably some very bright colours. There is a cadmium yellow. So you could mix that cadmium yellow with the Irish blue looks quite cold um, and the warm blue and get some nice greens without even going here. So you could probably make every colour that's in here with six pencils. Does that make sense? But that's for, as I say, that's that's one of my other things is to, is to go through all the stash I've got, all my different mediums, and from six colours create any colour that we need for our colouring books. Uh, because I think it's important that people have to not realise they've got to buy a hundred of everything. Um, because I'm a bit of a tight Yorkshire lass, I have to say. So I'll bob that back onto there. Um, what time are we coming up to now? Because I think I brought you stream a few weeks ago. Um, so I'll probably carry on with this um, and, pit, and see if I can build up some more. Um, but I find that a lot easier when something's really, really kind of, uh, it looks really complicated, it's so busy, that if you pick certain things out and pick, kind of pick them off one at once, then other things behind that were, make, that were lost kind of will stand out. It's like, I'm sure if I put all the grass in here, the tortoise and the fish will stand out. But then that's just lent itself to that maybe coral instead of, Instead of seaweed, it's got to be grass. Does anybody else find that when you're doing some of these complicated um, things? Let me just have a scroll back down to. Uh, So I hope that wasn't as clear as, as clear as mud. Just see if I can get back to to where I was. Um, so I've still got some of that green actually, so I'll, I'll carry on until uh, my family arrive because I think, I think you know, Grandma's going to have to need some attention when she gets here. if that's okay with everybody. So I've turned this upside down. So I'll, I'll zoom back in just to see if I can finish these greens off. Sorry, that's the parrot. The parrot's in the corner. Three dogs are on the sofa. <laughs> when it's peaceful, it's wonderful. It's when anybody arrives, it's it's murder. So if I do that, and then I do that, for some reason it likes my pink nail, my red nail vanish. Very strange. Do you think that may have worked? I hope that's in focus. So I've, I've got this little. There don't seem to be many, but I want to do them. Oh, there is. I see. I've missed one there. You can look at one of these for hours and not find things. I was convinced I'd found everything, and then it's kind of disappeared on me. So I do like to keep that near because I, 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 there's another one there as well. I tend to drop things and. Um, 
So that's my real messy colours. And I'm using this green at the moment, which looks so pale, but it isn't. Because I don't think I'll be able to get that again. So I do want to get... I do want to get into this. If I get rid of the greens and I finish the browns, I can wipe the top of the I can wipe the top clean so it doesn't look quite so messy. Because it's quite easy to get confused. Well, it is for me anyway. Now there's some dogs barking, so I'm not quite sure why. But if I shout dog, for goodness sake, get ready for the little man here to bark. Um, oh, there's some more there that I've missed as well. They do pop up on you, these. You think you've found them all, you know where they all are. I will say that the sketchy stories one is very fine. I've had to switch from this paintbrush, which is a 10 0. I've had to switch to a 3 0, but a very short one because this brush is too big. Uh, I think I ended up in a micro under a. Um, oh, by, by, um, by DD, by anybody that has to go. Um, thank you for stopping in. It's very kind of you to uh, to show your support. It's brilliant for people to share everything. Um, I've lost my little leaf now. I've just found another one as well. Just found another one. I'm just going to finish these leaves because I want to. I don't want to mix the colour again. So that's why I'm just finishing off. But thanks everybody for joining me. Um, I just thought I'd go through one of these pages because when you first get them they're a little bit daunting. Uh, as I say I did sit and, and study it for a little while picking things out and thinking about colours and I'm not really sure that I would do the Dr Martin's PH because they are very vibrant and I think these uh, because these are very fussy, as I call them, fussy. I don't think they'll lend themselves to bright colours. Um, but that's the beauty of photocopying things. You can do one bright and you can do one in muted colours and water co watercolours. Um, and then you can decide whether you think... Because I think that's the beauty of what, seeing other people's work. Some people have colours that you would never think of using. I've just got that one. I keep thinking I've got them all and I find another one. Um, as I say, I think I, I broke the stream, you stream. The first time I went on it, it didn't like me. And it hasn't worked very well since. Maybe it's the English weather it doesn't like. It's supposed to be having some summer, but we've got gale force winds out there. Right? So you do tend to be a lot quieter when you're uh, concentrating. So I think I've got... And I'm conscious of the fact my daughter keeps saying, I keep saying so and um a lot. <laughs> Every time I keep thinking I've found them, I find another one. I think we've nearly, I think we've nearly, I think we've nearly found our word. So I'm going to use the brown because I think that's going to disappear as well. Just to get some bark in there. And then that will lend itself to naturally the undergrowth so that's picked out some nice things uh, I did like the bark 
Mm, I liked it a bit of a darker colour. I added some blue into the brown to make it quite a nice dark, dark brown. Um, so where am I now? I'm going to be there. Oh, well, I'm going to be there as well, actually. I'll do that one first. Um, I like to start at the bottom because naturally, when you work this way with this kind of paintbrush, the darkest brown is at the bottom. So I'm actually going to start from there for the simple reason. I think I might go darker further down because that is actually a tree trunk it's, and it's coming across as a tree trunk so I hope you can all see this if I'm not zoomed in too much now that this is a little bit wet really um, I don't like working for two reasons one is it doesn't dry as quickly so you're prone to smudges and it's it might make the paper crinkle and I missed a leaf there for some reason so um, so if I just go back to that green there's a tiny amount left there I can color the leaf then and I think it's actually that the I think this is a leaf as well. Now there must have been a little bit of brown coming through on that spot. But it doesn't really matter that much. It's not going to be so. It's just if you do a bright pink leaf that it can look a bit odd. Unless you do them all bright pink and then you're fine. Bye, Carol. Thanks for joining us. I hope you've uh, had a good natter and enjoyed the uh, the stream. I uh, I want to carry on because I've got that little bit of brown in there. Um, and while it's oh, I've missed that bit now. I have missed that bit. I say this is especially when it's upside down, but. I think that fern is quite a vivid fern. fern. I've missed a green leaf there as well, but never mind. I'm not going back now because you wouldn't think this brown would be so vivid, and yet it's it's spoilt that green. So I think I think that's the tree. And I do like the fact that the more you come out, the more, the further you get up the branch, naturally the lighter it is. A little bit darker down there, I guess. It's obviously behind there. So it's quite nice to think a little bit more about how things really would be uh, in the in in the natural. Because these are more natural things. When you're doing a mandala, you need to have vibrancy and continuity and the force of the colour is is the pattern as well whereas this um, the colours are, are quite important but there's so much going on but this you can lend itself to look more kind of more natural and you can bring reality into it um, although it's the first time I've done that, I have to say, it's the first time I've done that. But I think it's I've progressed from my little book into watercolours. And that's naturally made me work a, di a completely different way. Um, and I never thought I would go back to watercolours. Um, although it has made my hands hurt. I don't, I'm not sure what's going on there, so I'm just going to leave that there. Um, it's, it's 
I'm not sure whether I'll stick with this. I like it at the moment and I find it, I, I like the vibrancy of some of the colours. But I probably wouldn't mix these watercolours. Um, I probably would maybe, thinking about it, I think I will put three dollops of this colour into my little book. Um, I've just thought of that. Let me just finish this and we'll do that to see if it works. We'll put a piece, we'll put some tube colours because I have some some cheap um, student grade watercolours that I was going to put into there but they will react the same way as the Cotman actually are not um, professional watercolours. Having said that, I've used them for years because the pigment is very good and I judge everything by a pigment. So if I, is that a good idea do you think? Is everybody okay with that? So if I just go back to there and I'm going to put that there. And I'll just see experiment because again that's all you can do really is just experiment with what we've got. So um where's my little book from? Um because that was getting rather wishy washy and I've I've only got a few little leaves to do. So I've got three colours. And because that's going to be a palette, and because this is raised up a couple of millimetres, I'm going to put them here, I think. I'm going to put the lemon yellow there. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm just squeezing this out. So I'm making a pan almost a colour. I'm, and I'm going to do this with um, the... With, see this is why I can't do this because if I had to do this all the time my hands would be poorly. So what I've done is I've put a fat blob square of colour almost as thick as a couple of millimetres um, I might have to play with that because it's. Because I've put that one there and I'm going to put the blue one here. Oh, I may put it up there. No, I won't put it. Yes, I will put it up there. Because this is. Oops. I think that's my family arriving. So I've done that and I'll just quickly put the other one because the dogs will bark. So thank you everybody for stopping with me and for, it's very kind of you for joining me. I hope you've had a good, that's a very, very bright red, isn't it? I hope you've had a wonderful time and uh, do join me again next time. Thank you for watching.